welcome to the second part of Series 51, everyone. I cannot wait for you to hear the phenomenal stuff we have for you this episode. If you enjoyed last week's episode, this one is going to be the icing on the cake, I think. It is just so good. Oh, chef's kiss. Uh, absolutely. But before we get there, we have some brief announcements. First up, if you missed the news last week, we've started a Patreon for the podcast. In fact, this entire series is currently up on the Patreon feed at the $5 and up level. So if you want to support us directly to help cover the costs of the show, check us out at patreon.com slash character creation cast. Mm -hmm. Next up, check out the Alchemistress's Kickstarter page. If you are listening the day this episode releases, the campaign starts tomorrow, June 14th. If you are listening any other day before the campaign ends, well, check it out. Uh, we have a link directly to it in the show notes. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have been working hard on taking our show to the next level. Uh, take it up a level, as you might say. <laughs> uh, a part of that is revamping our YouTube page. We've had a couple people here and there say that they found us through YouTube or they would like us to be on YouTube. Or my son said that was the only way to be cool. So... Mm -hmm. If you head over to youtube.charactercreationcast.com, you'll be able to find our latest episodes as they release and our backlog as I get to creating graphics for each of those episodes. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and they are turning out wonderfully. Yeah, I'm really excited. They look so pretty. Absolutely. And that's it for our announcements this episode. We will have more details in the call to action after the show, along with a special thanks and even a new review. Ooh, ooh. But in the meantime, enjoy this episode that brings just pure, pure joy to my heart. episode of Character Creation Cast. Allison was creating an art student who is also the mistress of air. Dora was creating a practical student who is also the mistress of earth. Amelia was creating a drama student who is also the mistress of fire. And I was creating a swim jock who is also the mistress of water. We're picking up right where we left off last time. Enjoy. Uh, yeah. And then now the thing that I've heard you're excited about is world building. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> so we're starting with the present day world. Yes. Um, so we're going to set up some present day shenanigans and then move into the past. So the introduction for this is that somewhere governments convene and adults have very important words. But in Alchemist Rises, the world centers around your life as a high school student. So we're going to look at what does that look like? What sort of tests are you taking? What sort of activities do you participate in? Who is your greatest rival? Is it a boarding school? A specialty school for athletes? What makes it worthy of being the setting of an anime? And uh, the first, so there's a list of questions and yes. each of us will choose one and we'll lead the discussion on that question. Um, so uh, all players take turns asking one of the questions from the list. The questions will be answered collaboratively. But the player who asked the question will take lead of the discussion and have final say on the answer. Mm. But before we do that, the most important question is, what club or activity do we all participate in uh, and what brought us together to it? Ooh. Um, and if, yeah, on the character sheet in the world building tab, that's where I will be uh, typing. Actually, uh, Dora, whose spelling is better than mine, will be typing people's answers. That's right. <laughs> Can we uh, do something really on the nose and say, like, the role-playing club? Uh, we can. We All could right. also... Wait. <laughs> I, I, have, I haven't seen that sort of activity presented uh, in many anime, if, if any. Uh, we had an anime club at school. <laughs> may I say it's LARP club? Because uh, LARP, yes. Yeah. Into LARP, LARP club. Yeah, that sounds I amazing. for sure am into that. 
Oh my goodness. Why why is June in LARP club? Sorry, yeah, I'm just reevaluating everything about June according to the fact that she's <laughs> in LARP club. No, you know why it is? It's because she likes she likes crafting things. I was gonna say, really do you likes, build like the costumes I and build the, the like costumes props and, and like oh, offer swords and things? Yeah. And I'm always pushing us to be like, I'm sure that like, you know, for instance, Ember's always like, no, we need to focus more on drama and performance. And I'm just like, sorry, I don't have time for that. I'm researching what, like, how cloaks were sewn in the 13th century. Yeah, you're, like, more into LARP as a reenactment kind <laughs> <Yes>. of thing. <laughs> and I'm like, this is my moment. Sadly, there are so few LARPers that they all have to get together. Mm -hmm. All right. And so I will read out the list of questions. And we can go in any order. If one of them calls to anyone, uh, you can just dibs it. Um, mm. And this is the same process we'll do with the past world, but with a different set of questions. Right. Uh, so the questions are, how has the modern world changed since the great evil and magic have begun to reappear? That's one. What makes your school unique? Uh, describe your club or activities, everyday antagonist and why they are so annoying. <laughs> uh, what's your school's mascot? Describe your school's cliques. Where do people hang out between classes? And describe the school's most beloved teacher and what subject uh, they teach. Okay. Can can I throw out my my zany idea? Okay. If you pick a question, you get full control to throw out your zany idea. Right. I don't know if if it's it, this is like a general world question instead of like yeah. anything specific. Um, my thought was. Uh, the present day is far in the future, and the past is our now? modern times. With magic, though. With magic, with magic, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm into it. So we're LARPing what I'm what I'm sewing. Oh my gosh, we're LARPing 2022. Oh god, that <laughs> but is like so in 2420, yeah, yeah, yeah. So like hundreds of years in the future, and it's like. Not too much has changed. Like maybe we have hover cars. Maybe we've got like you know fusion power plants and we still go to all that fun stuff. High school. We we still go to high school. The, and the American like, education system hasn't changed at all. No. <laughs> <laughs> that, that sounds Hot about take. right. <laughs> we're we're lucky that it hasn't changed right. in the downward direction. But Oof. yes, yeah, yeah, like I'm it. on board for it. Oh, that's so interesting. We're still using yeah. the same textbooks though. <laughs> no, it's not fair they were updated in 2025 oh okay yep. all right like the ones i had in high school that were like during ronald reagan's pregnant preg yeah. presidency everybody's presidency. excited for jimmy carter's <laughs> president yeah right like we can't grade. wait to see what he does yeah mm -hmm. uh. <laughs> oh wow awesome no i'm so on board for that um i also like our historical reenactments will be like they're like, we've recreated an in and out burger exactly as it would have been yes. in mm -hmm. 2020. Yeah. The, the rise of uh, the computers and, and how, how, how quaint a personal computer used to yeah. be. Yeah. Oh, my mm -hmm. God. Just no, I, I, I just lovingly create these beautiful, like, you know, like, uh, like, uh, like first generation I iMacs that are like all <laughs> yeah. colorful. Yeah, this is going to be like us describing like iPhones in this game. Yeah. It's going to be like me trying to explain a Nokia to my son. And I was like, no, it had phone. And he was like, yeah, but like what kind of apps? I was like, no, it had phone. It had <laughs> like, that phone. Was, it had you phone. Know the phone app. That's what it right. Did. And he's like, when you texted people, I was like, no, buddy, it had phone and it had snake. And that was it. <laughs> snake. So I, I have, uh, I have, I have an idea, which is, um, describe your club activity groups everyday antagonists and why they're so mm. annoying yes please um, so i i feel like so it, there's a there's a there's a famous uh expression about academic politics that like the reason academic politics are so vicious is because the stakes are so low mm. um i feel like our biggest enemy is not like the cool kids it's the other nerds and I was going to mm. say, I was like, it's the people that are like, that's not historically accurate. And actually you would have. So yeah. I think that our biggest enemy, since we're in like the future, are the, I, I don't know, like what they would call it. They're virtual LARPers. 
They are people who create gorgeous virtual spaces to LARP in. And I think that what we're doing is so primitive and stupid. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, that that yeah. that would track, yeah. I love okay. that. Why, why would you do this in person? Like, you, there's no way it's ever going to look as good as, like, our VR whatever yeah yeah like like i like i picture vr in the super future is like you know not like only star trek sound, holodeck but, but feeling as well right like mm. you're, you're in it's a the whole character. sensory experience yeah and we're okay. like you can have a sensory experience too you just have to pick the thing up <laughs> you have to pick up the actual they're like why are you touching real wood right, <laughs> right. <laughs> um so i have one for the question what makes your school unique um what if our school is like a specialty school for history. Like it has a special history program, which is why there are so many people really invested in, uh, in LARP. <laughs> yeah, there's two LARP groups mm-hmm. invested least, in historical yeah. accuracy. Mm-hmm. Um, so maybe it has some sort of program or like a it feeds into like a or prestigious a magnet school. Yeah, it's a yeah. magnet school for classics majors. Sure. Yeah. People like who that. study yeah. the 20th. And 21st it's a, century. It's a liberal arts school. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the classics, like, um, so who's a class? Who would, who would be a classics in the future? Like, of our current Kanye West. Stephen King. <laughs> oh, my God. Stephen <laughs> King would Stephen be. Stephen King would be. It's yeah. true. <laughs> Beyonce, classical music. Yes. Yeah. Oh, my the God. People would be like, it's not actually classical. That was before Beyonce, technically. Yeah, it's, the, it's right. like classical it's, for us, but like not it's classical. It's neo, 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 neo pop classical. They, they've got classical and like classical proper. <laughs> That's how they distinct the two. Yeah. All right. Beautiful. Um, does anyone else have a question that speaks to them from the remaining ones? Ooh. So the questions that remain, uh, how has the modern world changed since the great evil and magic have begun to reappear? Um, What's your school's mascot? Ryan, Uh, to answer that first one that you said, because you kind of defined that thing about the world that like this is the future. And so I I would like you to say like what what has changed? Yeah, because of evil. Yeah, 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 evil and magic coming back. So like, um, uh, my question is is magic from the past treated like we treat magic in medieval times sort right. of thing like yeah, yeah like sure there was magic yeah. yeah of course yeah that definitely fantasy here's the actual history right yeah mm-hmm. um so I'm, I'm thinking like our times now is what they're teaching but in reality there was actual magic as well yeah what is that so, like they find like? out that iphones were powered by fairies is like the actual yeah. well actually everybody knows that real computers are powered by ghosts yeah, yeah. <laughs> i insist on that i'm like that's why they work sometimes and not others is that computers are powered by ghosts so in the future they're like people in people in the 21st century believed computers are powered by ghosts that's ridiculous yeah but mm-hmm. then it turns out they actually were powered by ghosts is that yeah, the, exactly like, yeah something okay. like that yeah 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 I love um, that. So I think magic coming back into uh, the the actual uh, uh, world itself, I believe, gosh, it can't have been too long since it started to resurge, right? Because we're we're starting to wake up as well. Yeah. Um. So I think it's it's caused some like um, technological mishaps. Yeah, like I think stuff is more random. Temperamental now because it's... yeah, yeah. Because it actually is ghosts. Yeah, stuff is less less predictable. Yeah. Uh, like they they had gotten over that at when magic kind of went away and figured out how to create technology that doesn't, you know, have a mind of its own. Mm-hmm. But now it's starting to have a mind of its own again, and uh, and also like you know, um, I would say like sightings of like you know like cryptids used to be a big thing Mm -hmm. but then they weren't for a couple hundred years and now like now we have sightings of of bizarre (laughs) sightings of bizarre like creatures and stuff are are starting to kind of be like what what what's going on here do i have to go to the historical archives to figure out like what sort of thing i'm seeing because i've nobody's ever seen something like yeah not in their lifetime can i say like as far as the evil too is that it is um happening in sort of like I don't know, quote unquote, like malevolent ways that it's not just like stuff yeah. malfunctioning. It's like kind of important stuff that's 
mm-hmm. starting to go wrong. Oh yeah, like it's uh like it's being first of all it's just kind of random, but then like once things are figured out, the evil is actually controlling the malfunctions to to yeah. you know, take things yeah, out. Yeah, and I think it's it's going to start like, you know, small like annoying stuff like traffic lights and, you know, but I think eventually we get to a point where like those VR worlds that people are building are like not what they're actually building. Oh. They start to kind of have a mind of their own. Love it. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Trapped in a computer. Another <laughs> trope. With all, com- <laughs> with all the computer ghosts. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. He does See, I got my stuff ghost. in there. I got ghosts in there. I did it. That's how you become a computer ghost. Yeah. I, I can I can easily see an episode um, around, like, uh, people getting, like, people disappearing, students disappearing, and the ones that are disappearing are really into this VR yeah, it's stuff. the VR LARP club. Yeah. And it turns oh, no. out they're in the VR now. And yeah. now we and, have to we save have to, them even though they and now suck. now we have to save them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Now we have to save that them. hero's work is never done. It's uh, also it's like true. in the early episodes, it's going to be the thing where it's like, you know, uh, like Ember runs the school with, with toast in her mouth, um, frantically trying to catch the bus. And as she's leaving her, like mom opens the virtual newspaper on campus right, where the headlines yeah. are like running all over the page and mm-hmm. one of them is like glitches like threaten food supply or something like that it's just you know yeah. there's like newscasters in the background being like o- officials are still puzzled by why yeah. traffic lights started glitching all over the city yeah it's just like I little like background that. mentions as they're watching the news and stuff like that and oh i love that like as I we love see the um, world building like the vr larp club like over time over the like the course of the season there's like fewer and fewer of them in the yeah and they're mm-hmm. getting sort of like stranger and more obsessive yeah yes yes oh so good mm-hmm. one more Maybe. um okay yeah. so i think yeah. i still have to answer one right yeah I can put the, yeah, the four left are these four. And they're more about setting, like, the mundane high school, right? Like, who, yeah. what are the cliques like? Who's the teacher everyone loves? Where do people hang out? Um, what's your mascot? <laughs> um, so I feel like where people hang out is a really easy question to answer, because I think it's the diner. Oh, oh. yes. That's, yeah, that's very good. So what it's probably, is like, like a... across the street from the school. Or actually, can I... So I think that this diner, because it is like, you know, like rich or future, whatever. Um, I think because it's kind of old and weird, it looks almost more like a Starbucks on the inside. Oh, my God. Oh. Oh, no. It's so old fashioned. I know. Like they still have all these weird coffee drinks and it's stuff. Like, it's, like the, it's like the 50s retro diner only yeah. uh, Starbucks. Only for 2020s. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, <laughs> but like not Starbucks. It's like a because it's yeah, like a yeah, mom yeah. and pop. So it's like a weird like a local hippie. It, it's like the latitudes yeah. here in Germany. This, this is like, a world where 400 years in the future, Starbucks no longer exists. And now they're trying to bring back that feel of. the Yeah, old, it's it's Appleton's Brood style. Awakenings is what it, there you go. I love that. Yeah, one. it's like I, a, or, uh, what's what's the what's the medieval times? But like, oh, my gosh. Uh, modern yes. times. It's modern, modern times. times. <laughs> Modern times. Yeah, like what is this? Millennial times. Millennial oh. times. Oh. <laughs> uh, 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 uh. oh, incredible. Oh, that sounds amazing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Great. Um, so now it, do we have to dress up when we work there too? Like we have yes. like stupid 2020s outfits. Yes. Oh my gosh. And it's what probably, do they look like? What does the no, 2020s restaurant outfit look like? The thing is, the thing is that it's like a blend of stuff from like 2030 through 1960 so it's like oh there's like gosh. bell bottom and like low-waisted jean there's low-waisted bell bottom. <laughs> 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 but also like uh like hot topic style shirts yes. that have like band logos and stuff on yes. them mm-hmm. yes yeah and, th- and they also do the uh the to the you know hover car service with hover skates yes oh, oh my nice. gosh so we're wearing low-waisted like bell bottoms with green day shirts <laughs> <laughs> oh my uh, god allison do you want to do do you want to do like one more facilitator question uh so if you were the um, if we're running this game because we're all making characters there's no like gm gm mm-hmm. uh, but if we were running this game the gm gets final say with one question so they get to choose something that they want touched on or that they might think wraps it up 
Um, so our our version of that will will be uh, us just uh, like I'm taking the role of GM, mm-hmm. um, and I'm going to say that you have a school mascot, and it it is an inanimate object. Oh my gosh! Like a technology related animal, inanimate object. What do you think would be a good oh. like? You're like the microchips or the the mm. something really dorky. Oh, that's good. Because. Yes, all the animals are got long gone, uh, I'm assuming. Yeah. Right. Oh so, like, what's God. something that, like, right now is, like, super mod, like, you know, like. I, I was I was thinking go, like, super basic even. Oh, really? Uh, okay. Like, the resistors. Yes. Oh, oh yeah, that's, no. like, really old. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Um, very, like, a piece of technology that is very basic, uh, but there are no more, no, no teams have animals anymore, no mascots or animals, mm-hmm. uh, or if they are, they are. Our uh, our outfits for the various you know whatever uh, sporting events mm-hmm. are like uh, the the gross tan like color of the resistor backers, but like uh, <laughs> oh. your your number your team number is is in the color in the, in the color bands. Oh, beautiful, uh, and it like represents it represents the resistor represents history strength. You know, it, you have consistency. like consistency. Yeah. Yeah. Some school motto like that. Yep. Um, <laughs> now I wish June was a cheerleader. <laughs> she just shouts, uh, uh was it? <laughs> <laughs> like it's a good, sh- yeah, okay, great. Okay. Uh, our chant has something to do with like positive and negative. And- our, yeah. our arch nemesis has to be the Borg uh, <laughs> because resistance is futile. There you go. No. <laughs> That's actually like something that's engraved somewhere because they think it's an old, like very knowledgeable saying. Yeah. From resistance is futile. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, from those old documentaries. So we have created the present. Uh, that is our world, our first world. Oh. Now we get to make a second <laughs> world through the same process. Um, though I guess our this is very strange. Our past is actually like a present world. Mm-hmm. Um, but in the past, you are the mistress of an element. You are chosen, marked, and a powerful magic user. The genre of the past can be nearly anything. In the past, you will be reliving your dramatic conflict with the great evil. Um, so your past world is a dramatic shift from the everyday life you are accustomed to. You are all powerful magical beings, but you will decide exactly what this looks like. Were you princesses of a planetary kingdom, warriors in a fantasy dimension bonded to animal companions, mystics tasked with defending, ter- defeating terrifying monsters, pilots of great machines? And we've kind of touched on this, but the first thing, that question that we ask for the present world is what group are we in together? The first question we all answer together for the past world, what is the genre or mood of the past world and what implications does that genre come with? Um... I'm linking to the current document with the list of questions, if that helps. Oh, yes. Thank you. Um, mm-hmm. So our genre is like what we're doing. We have a time period. Do we have like a genre with any tropes that we want to do in this time period? Is it, it can just be a drama in 2022. Is it paranormal romance? Right. Because it's the modern world and there's magic. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, that's pretty close. Um, I, I like I like. Yeah, definitely the the modern world with magic mixed into it. Um, oh, it's interesting. Are we effectively like superheroes mm. at this point? Like, I mean, would the modern world consider us? Yeah, I mean, I feel like, like that's like the superheroes? pop culture version of magical girl, yeah. like for America, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, I mean, you see that in like Sailor Moon, for instance, right? Like Sailor V is sort of like I mean, uh, a um, media figure. But there's a video yeah, game about, in fact. So, right. Yeah, yeah, probably. Like, we probably get, like, you know, media coverage. and mm-hmm. There's probably merchandise and... and yeah. uh, we don't see a sense. Uh, no. <laughs> no. And of course I'm gonna, not. People, like, probably don't believe that we're actually magic, right? Because that's right. the point of this time is, like... Oh. Right, I mean, there are people that do, but, like, yeah. again, it's Reddit. Reddit <laughs> believes that we're magic. <laughs> Oh my god, yeah. yeah. There's like these lengthy posts that's like, it's literally impossible that the mistress of Earth would, and somebody's like, it's holograms, please. It's a Mm -hmm. deep (laughs) fake. 
And then there's, yeah, there's, like, there's, like, conspiracy theorists who are, like, no, ghosts and computers are real, and so are the magical powers of these alchemistresses. Mm -hmm. But also there's tons of memes. Oh, my God. memes for days. Yeah. Okay. Beautiful. And the cell phone coverage? (laughs) (laughs) Like the people, the the citizens just taking cell phone video of all this. It's all, all over our TikTok, though. Yeah, and and like I think in the future that all this archived video and stuff that that finally made it through is like, look at these cool student projects <laughs> that these people made. Yeah, it's it's like, very much like probably looked at it the same way that we look at like people who wrote down Greek myths. Yeah, or like it was. Oh, they were telling fun stories. It's a parable. Yeah, fantastic it's not special actually, effects, though. Yeah, nobody literally believes it. Right. right. <laughs> That's so good. Uh, perfect. And then I will read out uh, the list of questions. I think a, a handful of them we've touched on already. So the first question mm. is: How long ago was the past world? The second is: Describe what magic looked like when it was at the height of its power. How was the past world changed by the great evil? What did the alchemistresses protect? Who saved the alchemistresses when they needed it most? Describe a hero of the past world and what the alchemistresses learned from their example. Tell a great legend of the past world. Do the people believe it? Describe who holds the power in the past world. Describe the voiceless of the past world. What do they need? And who was betrayed by the alchemistresses? So these are are all prompts and we're only going to pick, we can, I mean, we can do more if we want, but we only need to pick four. So if we don't want there to be betrayal, we don't have to touch on that question. Mm. Um, If we don't want there to be a hero, we don't need to touch on that. (laughs) Like betrayal? I (laughs) love betrayal. So this is the thing we've learned over time too, is that like, I love a good backstabbing plot. Ryan, I don't know, I guess, where you are now, but originally you were, like, not about that because you're like, we're at the table to be friends. I want to play games with my friends and I want to be friends. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if you're, like... NPCs, that's fine. Yeah. So, you know, you're not really any better. Okay. <laughs> and they I wasn't sure if, us. like... Because you can make bad guys now. You couldn't before. Yeah. But you can make yeah, more yeah, nuanced exactly. characters than you could. Yeah, exactly. um, that's character advancement. That's right. <laughs> um, I, I, I love a good... And I love moral gray areas. But mm-hmm. so I actually I have a question because you you know, we well, like how far in the past it is. So like we know what year it is, but I guess we didn't really define how far in the future we were. Yeah. Entirely. So like are we talking like five hundred years? Le- or? It has to be at least like four or five hundred years, if not like we could even be approaching that three thousand. Whoa. Oh, oh the year three thousand, not three thousand. The year yeah. three thousand. Yes. Yeah. So, um, like, I would like that because I think when I think about like medieval stuff, you know, like you think about how long that was ago, you know, I, I like that kind of span of time. It's enough that we've, yeah, we're like, we've lost kind of touch with what yeah. that was. It's so far beyond, you know, because even a hundred years ago, it's like, okay, we kind of, yeah. you know, know what like was we're on, we're on fully quantum computers and we can't read a simple zeros and ones anymore. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. Well, and I think like, you know, it's like a point where like, very few people know how to handwrite things because we type everything. Yeah. yeah. And why don't we say, just to keep it symmetrical, my immediate thought with this, I think I was thinking Futurama, which is the great work of fiction set of the year 3000. <laughs> yeah. yes. mm-hmm. But I think it should be, that was sort of set as like, it just turned 3000 and just update it to the current moment. It's like, yeah, 3000 came and went and we're sort of like in the aftermath of that transition point now. Wondering okay. what the heck is going on. I yeah. like the thought of like cursive writing being an ancient like thing that no one can yeah. read anymore. Yeah. yeah. Well, we're already. If, I always hear that from people all the time. They're like, they don't teach cursive in schools anymore, which, in my experience, is not technically true. Both of my children learned cursive, um, but I hear that from like other parents all the time. They're like, they don't teach that in schools anymore. Kids don't know how to read it, and so like the idea of you know in a five hundred, six hundred year, whatever, like no, they definitely wouldn't be able to. This is. Mm. I'm going to bring something strange up. Um, that it's like a, it's an idea I've had for a game for a long time that I've never done but how iPhones like replace certain words with emojis and like mm-hmm. my thought is like what if that just kept happening until like we went to communicating again with pictographs in a way like oh all I love it slowly. I love it just yeah we've like simplified circle. emojis down to the point where like it's a whole like understandable it's a whole concept in a, word, in, in a in a symbol yeah 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 
All right. So that was, <laughs> that answers how long ago it was. Plus, yeah, sorry. <laughs> some extra. De- no, that's great. Um, so I want to tackle what did the alchemistresses protect? And mm. what I'm wondering is my, my initial thought on that is that they protect, like, they protected, like, the human world or the rational world against the mm. magical world, right? Like, the magical yeah. world is sort of like an intrusion. Not that some people didn't use it or know about it or take advantage of it, but the alchemistresses mm. were sort of, you know, like, I, I'm picturing, like, the, like, the men in black monologue, like, you know, oh, like, yeah. people are, are just going to, like, wake up and go about their lives. Like, that's what we're here to do. Like, that, that was kind of yes. the energy. Like, if we're doing but, our job, people don't know about us at all. Yeah. Exactly. That that's kind of the the same sort of feel I was thinking of too. I love um, it. Um and and I love that that feel of like the the separation of mundane and magical um being a thing so like 99% of people in the world have no idea that this stuff is real and then you've got that 1% that's in the know, right? And like part of our job as alchemists is, is to make it look like those videos were faked like if someone catches that we have to make it look like Mm -hmm. part of it is just us like putting on the charade that of course this isn't real magic Mm -hmm. right so we're actually helping that happen although i still i i also do like the thought of uh like instead of magic people believe that we're just super powered yeah and like so when we do like heroic things it's just our superpowers it's science not magic those are different right yeah right yeah it's some kind of like I think there's a question of like, is it a medical enhancement? Is it, you know, like a supplement or mm-hmm. like really Cybernetics. good steroids? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I love it. So I think I want to take the describing what magic looked like when it, when it was at its the height of its power. Mm-hmm. And I, it, to like build on the separation, I think when it was at the height of its power, it was almost breaking through that separation and it was almost overtaking the mundane world. So it was like, to use a metaphor, it was like a, uh, a dam that was about to burst okay. um, and no longer able to ke- be kept hidden. If folks are okay with that as like a. Yeah, yeah I like it. That that sounds like something that would be uh, full of drama uh, and, and strife for our group. <laughs> Makes me think of um, like, there's, there's, it's just like a line in one of the later matrix movies where, you know, they say something like, you know, we've, we've freed more people in the last six months than we have in 10 years before that, right? It's just sort of like yeah. freaky stuff is happening and it's just impossible to hide it from everybody. So more, right. more people do about magic. I I think that kind of leads into how was the past world changed by the great evil? Mm. Um, I want to I want to say that that dam burst um, oh. at one point and... And because of that, like, um, there, there, it was almost like Ghostbusters level of, like, the, now there's ghosts everywhere and, uh, and all that sort of stuff. But like on a more you know magical level, and uh, and so it became this like phenomenon that was truth, uh, and like really a lot of uh, you know collateral damage along with it. Um, and then like once things settled down, it was like that, that whole like men in black style, like this didn't really happen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Things got cleaned up and, and the world was able to progress as normal. Right. I really like that. And then if I were to throw in a last question and I was GMing, the one I would want to kind of work on with the group is to describe who holds the power in the world and kind of get some like. Maybe some shady villains in here, maybe some uh, back alley, you know, people who know about magic. Like like a shadow organization? I love a good shadow organization. Yeah, like a like a a almost Illuminati level sort of thing, controlling the world's governments. And because on the other hand, what if the reason that Tesla's work is because of ghosts? (gasps) Yes, self-driving and... cars are actually ghosts i like i love that like i love this there's like a no a hundred percent on board there's like a team of like a team of humans who know about this magic and have made some sort of deal to be able to use it 
Mm-hmm. And now I think it's protected as corporate secrets yeah, rather than it's corporate mm. I mean. So the, the shadow organization is uh, corporate America. Yeah. I just really wanted to fit capitalism in there somewhere. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was important. Well, I to love me. ghosts driving self driving cars. Mm-hmm. Like it's actually magic. We're putting yeah. our hand our lives in the hand of ma- hands of magic and, <gasps> and know when it. you Google things, you're actually just asking ghosts. Oh my god. No, this is perfect. This is why the AI. this is why there was the crisis at our moment, right? It was because like the reason that magic was rampant is because Shinra Corporation was using Mega to power their self-driving yeah. cars and it's killing the planet. Mm-hmm. And and the like like all the AI that are being like you know coded in the world are just taking advantage of these ghosts yeah and and then like <gasps> they're just trapping that... spirits inside robots they're not actually building yes. robots yes and then like that that whole singularity event that that's yeah. so prominent in ai discussion where ai starts becoming more intelligent that it can create more intelligent ai that's kind of like what this this dam is that that they're approaching right like getting to that singularity event is what what causes that to burst oh my gosh that's so good i really like this because when we when and i it was my i did it i introduced like the men in black analogy and it's it's easy for us to sort of become like we're on the side of the elites against the common people which is never like Mm. the dynamic that i want so i like Mm -hmm. the idea that the real villains are the people who are slipping magic into like you know we're we're changing the boundaries of how magic is used in a way that's really dangerous Mm -hmm. oh i love that so much oh and everybody blames all the calamity on the ai (sighs) it's the algorithm we don't know what it's doing and then that's why they take away the ai and start building technology with with 100 percent yes certainty on what the tech can do they just stop using it yeah Oh, Good. that's why our, our th- year 3000, everything's predictable until the AI starts taking over again. Never trust an AI. Because the AI is actually go. But there's like, but there's like good and bad AIs, I think. Yeah, oh, just yeah, like yeah. ghosts. There's no reason you couldn't have a Just good, like ghosts. Yeah. There's Casper and then there's everything else. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Those are the two exactly. genres of ghosts. <laughs> No, that's perfect. That's amazing. I think it's all falling together very well. Oh, I'm really perfect. excited about this. Yeah. Uh, so that is our past world. We have created our past world. Now we get to create our magical girl superheroes, oh. mistress of water, fire, air, and earth. Um, and let's pull that up. So this, the character sheet you see of the past one works very similar To the present day, Mm -hmm. you have three convictions. Uh, Instead of a transformation phrase, you have a victory phrase, which all magical girls have, um, which you must shout to detransform. So going back to your mundane form, you have to uh, shout that victory phrase. And then instead of a bio, you have spells. And that's going to be the most complicated uh, part of this. We actually got one of our contributing writers who you might know if you know Shang Biswas, um, who is a tabletop role play designer in New York, who I went, I met in grad school while we were both like doing design work there. Cool. It's amazing. Um, mm-hmm. Wrote a guide to how to make the perfect spells. So that will be useful. Uh, but now we get to find out who is in the year 2022 and knows that the self-driving cars are ghosts. Oh, goodness. Um, let me pull up the, the past self. And there's a little introduction to this. It's called what you remember and what you've lost. So at the beginning of the game, you actually won't remember your past life at all. That will change when you confront evil and transform for the first time. But even then you will only regain your full memories gradually through effort and hardship. When you first transform, you only remember what's written down on your character sheet. It'll be an element, a victory phrase, three convictions, and one spell. You don't even remember your name. You don't remember all your abilities or even the full context of your convictions. You can use this to help build the story in the world you want to play in. Maybe you want to explore romance in this game and you like hot, tragic boys. You could make (laughs) your deepest regret, I never told him I loved him. But who is he? Is there a reason you didn't tell him you loved him? We don't know yet, but the Game Master now knows that you want to find out. 
so these convictions can be left. There can be mystery left in them that over the course of a season, you would uh, through it, like our advancement mechanics essentially are giving you these pieces of who you were. Um, and your element and pronouns. You and your fellow fellow players are mistresses of elements. Uh, there was a mistress of each of the elements, air, water, earth, fire, and spirit. We will not be making spirit. If we were playing a game, your GM would actually, in secret, make a spirit alchemistress that will, oh, cool. would play into the season over the course of the Ooh, season. That's fun. Um, it's not, like, the fact they're doing it isn't a secret, but you wouldn't uh, have access to that character They're like sheet. the mm-hmm. white Power Ranger. Yeah, exactly. They're the, <laughs> they're the outer scouts of, yep. the, uh, of the season. Oh, I love it. So decide with your fellow players who is each element. We've done that. And this is how you are referred to when you're transformed because you don't remember your name. So you will be mistress of water, mistress of fire, mistress of earth, and mistress of air. Okay, so I don't have to make a new name. No. Nope. <laughs> Not yet. You actually get the whole season to think about that. Oh, that's I have so a question, though. Yes. Because we're doing, like, two different time periods. So, and and I think maybe the superhero analogy is messing me up a little bit. But, like... I'm like full time Mistress of Fire. I don't have like a different identity. Yeah, you are full time Mistress of Fire. Okay, I, I think have to that come up with like a whole other. Yeah, if we were playing a full campaign, I think that one thing that could come out was some sort of like that's something that we could explore during play, but sure. it's not something you oh. have to worry about for this this cool. case, right? Like cool, we cool. could, yeah, I, yeah. I can easily see like it's starting out like we're getting these memories of being these mistresses. And that's all we have of these past selves. But then as time goes on, we see that they also had mundane lives. Yeah. Like your past right? self was yeah. a full person. Yeah. 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 Oh, with secret identities and oh. That's really complicated. It's wheels I, within wheels. I think Ryan wants to make seven characters. Well, <laughs> yeah. And like, I would like to make seven. It's like we have, um, we designed a game where you play as a teenager pretending to be someone on a role playing site where they play as like a Buffy the Vampire Slayer character. Oh my so gosh. You had to have like three <laughs> levels. Of just character. the levels. Yep. Um, Characterception. Mm-hmm. <laughs> never make it. I never make character creation simple because I love it so much. Uh huh. So yeah, you will be talking about like the just who the magical being is essentially. Again, you'll have a victory phrase. Uh, Dee, do you have a good example of victory phrase you'd like to give us? Oh gosh, what is Maddie's victory phrase? Um, oh, I know. Uh, so a lot of her stuff, her spells and so forth, are about like flight and motion. So at the end of the battle, she says, "Stuck the landing." Very nice. <laughs> nice. That's good. I put I put her on the spot for that. Uh, so. <laughs> Like your present self, your past self has three guiding convictions, your primary cause, which is kind of a grand version of your personal goal, right? This was the main motivator in your past life. It can show itself subtly in your present day self, and it will help you make decisions when you're transformed into an alchemistress. Like the primary goal of your present day self, it can be abstract or deeply specific and perfect uh, personal to be the strongest or to never let her forget our good ones. Uh, and a reminder, like we can keep these kind of vague. Um, because the details could be would be filled in through advancement. And the deepest regret is something you regret to this day. It can be something you didn't do, like I never told her, or something you did, like I betrayed her, her. but it should be something that deeply affected you in your past life. And then the last one is uh, the pair to they were important to you now. It is they were important to you then. So this is a relationship important in your past life. It will tie you to a different player than your present day one did. Um... And like they are important to you now, this conviction will be decided in collaboration with that player. And remember, they can be asymmetrical. Uh, one thing that I want to let you know, just because we're not reading through the whole rule book, which is actually really interesting, is that you can regain your memories at different speeds. So someone might remember that they were your lover in a past life before you do. Or they oh. might remember that uh, you had a big fight that you don't remember. So that can play into these kind of relationships. Um and making, yeah, making oh. them really complicated and dramatic and fun. Um, Feelings. <laughs> I'm just, Ryan's having a moment over there, too. This, ga- this game is just delicious. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, uh, we've had some, like, the remembering at different times is one of my favorite things. 
Um, and whether you have, uh, there's a mechanic, and we'll talk about it in advance since there's a mechanic um, that decides whether the memory you have is a positive one or a negative one. Mm. And so it's possible that you only have negative memories of a relationship while someone else only has positive ones. Oh. It's, uh, yes. it's we really, had a, it's, it's fun. We had a play <laughs> test where there were two players who had like just a ton of negative memories after two sessions and two players who had only positive memories. And it was, it was a really interesting group dynamic. Oh, because so they had very different, the characters came to very different decisions about what it meant to be an alchemistress yeah. because of what they had remembered. Um, so wow. that's just, uh, just to let you, to inform you if you had read, like, we don't want to go through the whole thing. It's a lot, but to consider when making a relationship with another person, um, how to add to the drama. Mm -hmm. We can start uh, as we did with the present self, just with the like goals and regrets. Um and again, as specific or as general as you want, based in the world that we have just made. Hmm. Uh, I'm excited to see people make spells, too. That's what I'm most excited about. And I guess... I see myself as being sort of, like, political, kind of, like... E. I was just thinking about that, too. Opinionated, forward-facing, you know. Um, well, obviously very anti-capitalist, but... <laughs> oh, perfect like if i had a mundane life it would be as like a u.s senator or something mm. oh, but like good. an no, effective and passionate one like a good one you <laughs> know? know the u.s senate is having a moment right now right, <laughs> right. <laughs> i take it back like, they're not poor people they deserve it but. right no i would i feel like i would be more like the alexandria ocasio-cortez yes, kind yes, of yes. vision you know mm. absolutely uh, so i like that like politician vibe yeah, we're trying to figure out how to like. Um, another thing I really like have found very interesting is having a past self that is very different from your present self, but in a way that your present self would either be like disappointed in or excited by, you know, would have a strong feeling about. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so I think I might also because my present day self is like really flighty and artsy. I might lean into something more um, serious for my past self. Yeah, it's kind of where I was going to is like I, I my present self is very passionate, but sort of like in an artistic way, whereas I think that this is more passionate in like a sort of systemic yeah. way. So I'm going for my primary cause being build my community into something thriving and stable, um, which I it feels like hmm, it, I think of it the same way that it, there's something about like, mm, I'm trying to turn it put into words why it feels the same as, you know, my primary cause in the present is save enough money to take a trip to Europe after I graduate, right? It's sort of about like amassing something, like achieving something, um, mm. but it's turned outwards, right? It's like a more mature, like, and also more yeah. ambitious version of mm -hmm. of that. More heroic, frankly, right? Mm -hmm. yeah i like that i think and i've i've put in for mine that my parent causes to do all the boring things that keep us safe so i mm. i expect that she like does spreadsheets and uh makes plans and logistics oh, and nice. monitors right. the for the reddit forums to see what's happening <laughs> that's what i, like I do for my real job <laughs> yep no oh, i like no. i i I am a regulatory coordinator, so like Ooh. my job is to make sure that we have done all of the paperwork, but I work in oncology research. So it's like I get to do all of the FDA filings and things to make sure that we can do the cancer research because yeah. all yeah. of these things have to happen before we can do the cool good stuff. <laughs> yeah, and I think that that's yeah, that's that's her that's her position. Um, oh, that's good. Uh, so I went with uh, to divert, to divert the flow of evil away from the mundane world. Uh, she spends more time as a hero than her alias. That's dedication. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I ended up saying I want to channel my passion to build a system that actually works for everyone. I like this. I like this team, too. I know. This feels like a good, a good team. Uh, but now we hear we feel we figure out what their deepest regrets. Um, and this is something that we can, which is interesting. We can do with like the hindsight because they have lived their entire lives by the time we've met them. So anything that has happened in their lives can be their deepest regret. I'm going to jump right in with um, that, that thing about 
the thing about um, hot tragic boys is uh, just like a it's a mislead, it's a red herring, because mm-hmm. I like hot tragic girls. Uh, oh, so I mm-hmm. just cleverly threw people off the scent. Um, so I'm just gonna go with uh, I wasn't there for her when she really needed me. Oof. Mm. Yeah, Thread does that sometimes. We'll replace. Kissing girls with kissing boys, just to appeal to the broader public. Oh. Um, uh, I my deepest regret as a mistress of air was that I lost myself along the way. Um, so I'm thinking it's it's dedicating too much time to maybe these like monitoring all these people and all this thing, all of this like work, and forgetting about herself while it happens. Mm. I picked. I trusted the wrong person. That's oh, that's one. a good one. It leaves itself open mm-hmm. for a lot of fun drama and like the the suspense. I know, Ryan. Ryan's got to think really hard. I'm getting there. Okay. Um, I spent too much time with heroics and could never put my all into a into my relationship. Oh, very good. Yes. Good. Great. That's a wonderful thing to have like memory flashbacks too mm-hmm. it's beautiful oh yeah so now we do that pairing um there's no bio in the past world exactly the same way because we will get that through memory flashbacks mm-hmm. so it's at this point that we can pair ourselves uh like see if there's any any two mistresses that seem like they would pair well together and we encourage pairing outside of the original one that you did to be able to interact with different people can I can I make a suggestion? Absolutely. That can't be me because I've already I'm paired with water in present day. Um, but considering the regret is not putting the all into a relationship, uh, I feel like someone should be tied to that in some way. I, I Ryan, I f- yes. feel like mine can go with yours too. Oh yeah. yeah. Because I think that it's, you know, like I trusted you to do this thing and you did not put everything into it. Oh, that's good. Oh, beautiful. And then I think, uh, D, the, I wasn't there for her when she really needed it and I lost myself. I think those pair well together too. Yeah. Um, that's very good. When did I need you though? Or what was our relationship? We don't have to come up with the exact when. I feel like it has something to do with like sort of all of the, the work that you're doing of like keeping track of all of these things and you needing somebody to like yeah see you as you and more than just like the person that gets stuff done you need somebody to like you know like not be the person that's propping everybody else up but have somebody care about you as a person i think that we were i think we were best friends and you know like the we uh, and not that we like drifted apart over like a long period, but just like I, I wasn't, yeah, we weren't we weren't there for each other at, at like some critical moments. Yeah, so I'm gonna put the they were in court. The mistress of ours was was my best friend. Uh, she was the only one who saw me for me. Or I will put she's the only one I felt saw me for me because I think that's important yeah. distinction. I'm gonna say I was the only one who saw how much the mistress of air really took on. Yeah, so I worded mine. I wasn't able to be there fully for the Mistress of Fire because I was too single-minded with my heroics and couldn't reconcile that with my powerful feelings for her. Oh, yes. Also, you have two crushes on two different people in two different times. I love <laughs> Very <it>. important. <laughs> we need at least one character that has that in every game. Oh, it's so good. I think our, our other game is leading to a thruple because there's like a, oh. a present-day girlfriend, a present-day girlfriend who was a past life boyfriend and an ex in both. Anyway, it's complicated. Oh, that's so good though. <laughs> yeah, it's quite the a polycule quite a diagram. mapping when you have two multiple lives, personalities. Just, yeah. Like, mm-hmm. It gets more complicated. Yes. Yeah, I worded mine as I really need help and the Mistress of Water didn't come through for me. Great. I love your victory phrase. I I'm <laughs> I'm Googling wind puns now. That's so good. Do we want to, I think everybody but you has their victory phrase. Do we want to skip ahead and do that? Just trying oh my to God. Yeah. Okay. Me. I'm just, I'm going fast. I'm going to, no, I'm no, going to no, make no, it happen. Take yeah, your fine. time. Cause we, we edit it out. So, <laughs> um, but yes, I'd love for everyone else to see, uh, say them while I look at this list of 30 wind puns. 
Um, I'll start. We can go in opposite order this time. Um, so the mistress of Earth's victory phrase is pick yourself up and dust yourself off. I put my, I'm going to say this very carefully so that Ryan doesn't have to edit it. <laughs> I just kicked your ash. <laughs> um, mine is uh, time to towel off. All right. And I've decided on. Guess you're gone with the wind. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, those are some all-time greats. That's a good sleep. That's excellent. Amazing. All right. And then we have the stats to go over. Um, but you're obviously more powerful as an alchemistress than you are as your normal self, of course. Uh, so as a powerful magical being, your stats are obviously higher. But they can also be in a different order. If they are, think of why this might be. Maybe your past self grew up on a farm doing heavy lifting but missed lots of classes, so you're stronger than your present self, but not as smart. Uh, in your alchemistress form, you start at a d6, a d8, and a d10. Um, your resolve is a d8. If you looked at the like PDF when you actually print a form, there's a very clever paperclip method that when you flip the sheet your resolve remains persistent which i was very proud of mm. um, less evident in the excel spreadsheet <laughs> <laughs> so yeah i can jump in with my change stats but the mistress of air i think has swapped Madi and Ma Madi, mind and spirit uh from uh the mundane from sky's mundane form so mind is actually the mistress of air's highest where spirit is the lowest, which is the opposite. Um, and I think this is because she's dedicated so much of her time to these very intricate, like, mm -hmm. uh, intellectually draining tasks um, and has spent so much less time getting mm. in touch with her, like, sense of self and uh, charisma and yeah. willpower. I had before I had spirit and then mind and then body, and so I switched mind and spirit. So I think this character is like i don't want to say smarter but like more like on the critical thinking side a little bit but um still fairly passionate and then um my body's the lowest still there's more than one way to kick ash mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> i'm very proud of that one yeah okay. um so i went with uh the highest for mine the d10 is a spirit um, because they're very strong willed, um, and they've, they've got a strong personality about them, um, which is a, a little different. Uh, whereas, uh, in my past self spirit was my second highest. Um, and then body is my second highest, uh, because, uh, she focuses so much on the heroics that, uh, she, she's got to maintain that conditioning, um, but still stronger of will than, than body in this uh in this life and then mind uh the lowest because uh in this instance she she is kind of like this super single-minded uh individual that um misses some things mm -hmm. uh and, and isn't as uh you know present in in that regard yeah i love it so good um and i i kept the same sort of spread so um, I have highest spirit, I would do 10, middle body, and then lowest mind. Um, so I think that her, it definitely uh, expresses itself very differently because I think rather than it being sort of like, I can endure it, I can grind through this. It's more sort of like, I am a leader, I'm tied to my community, I'm very, very rooted. Um, yeah. So it's, she, she, it's kind of the same energy, but she, you know, she wears it and like inhabits it very differently. Cool. Uh, yeah. I like that. Mm -hmm. Now it is time for spells. Oh. Uh, so this is, like I was talking about earlier, this is a thing where we like, we had an intricate and elaborate, very mechanical combat system. And we're like, is this expressing what magical girls are? And we're like, no. So we just replaced it with the thing that is the most fun for us. Uh, and I will go into it with you. I'm going to read the gist of it and then sharong wrote uh a guide and we'll see we don't have to go into the full detail it's really good for first time or inexperienced players because it gives like very structured ways that you can build spells but we'll see like what we want to do mm -hmm. uh, but spells 
Alchemy can create almost any effect. You will start with one spell, and that's what we'll be building today, although you will learn more as your memory returns. Each spell represents an aspect of your element that you have mastered and that you have control over. Mechanically, whatever you describe will have the same level of power. So a spell that summons a tornado will give you the same bonus in combat as a spell that softly whispers poetry. Uh, what is most important is that you choose something flexible and fun. Create something that you would enjoy finding multiple uses for, and that will be exciting to describe interacting with the world. Um, so we kind of, the touchstone we use for this is to talk about like bending uh, from Avatar, if you've seen that. But if not, it's a control, like you start with control of maybe uh, water and then you get control of blood because blood has water in it, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so those are the ways that you can progress. Um, and it's less like a, a Sailor Moon attack because those are very stock the same stock footage every single episode right mm -hmm. uh which we love but we we essentially want you to like <laughs> have the chance to describe a new fun way that sailor jupiter would use lightning every time right mm. so also <laughs> to use your spell you must dramatically shout it uh that seems to be a reoccurring theme yep. in this game uh so you have to name your spell uh, and then describe what part of the element your alchemistress has mastered using it so the example, oh, do you want to do the example, D? Sure. Uh, yeah, so um, Maddie, my new character from a current playtest, uh, is Mistress of Air. And um, if she gets really angry at somebody, she'll break out her second level spell. Sky Rage! <laughs> Beautiful. Nice. Uh, and what do you have, what have you mastered with it? Oh, uh, good... it's control uh, Control of lightning. Um, so, uh, so she... Uh, she mostly uses it to shoot lightning bolts at people, although she's come oh, up with okay. a few um, a few other uses, like sort of traveling like lightning places. Uh, and so other things like for Earth, you could uh, control mud or growing things or living plants or dust. Um, we can, yes. So if you have ideas, we can go with them. If not, I can go into like different ways to create a spell. Uh, and also... Sharang did some great tests on like seeing if your spell will be fun, <laughs> essentially. Um, so nice. what are we feeling? Are people... All right, I'm going to read you a tiny bit uh, of how to make a spell, because I think it will be... It'll inspire. Yes, please. I'm having trouble so coming up with like... I always feel like sometimes when like things are really broad, it's like you can do anything. Yes. I'm like, I don't... What? <laughs> no, that's why we're like, when we first did it, we're like, oh my goodness, this is very broad. And some people right away know what they want to do. But yeah, um, we wanted someone who also has really, who has a really good background with like narrative yes. spells. Uh, so we'll start with some tips. Uh, a spell is conceptually narrow. So something like control earth is too broad because you want your spell to have creative constraints on you. You want to feel clever every time you use it. An example I use, like, this is a Dungeons & Dragons example, but one time I made a, cre a character who was, I wouldn't call this min-maxing, but, like, I just built the character to be able to summon as many ponies at once as possible. Yeah, like you uh, do. And then <laughs> the whole game was just me being like, oh, I don't need to tech trap. I have ten ponies. And just, like, send ten <laughs> ponies in. Or, like, oh, what if I summoned the pony ten feet in the air and had it drop on them? Uh, so, like, for me, that was fun and creative. Yeah, so you, you start of, finding like, ways to use it, too, because it's fun. You're like, well, <laughs> can I, like, fit this in here? It was 64. I could summon, I think, 64 ponies at once. So cool. Um, D&D has rules wow. like that. Like, I played with somebody, too, that was, like, I'm trying to remember what she could summon. I think it was, like, owls or something. And, like, no, it was badgers. Um, and it was like, we got to the point where she could summon like 80 badgers. And we we're like, why would you ever need that many? <laughs> exactly. Like I literally could do nothing else, like zero other things. But that's like kind of an example I use. Like you'll be using this one thing for the first part of the season. So make it fun. Mastery of sand is more interesting because it doesn't apply to every type of earth and create certain images. Arms of earth could even be more interesting. It creates arms made of mud, something that everyone can picture and a constraint that helps you tell a story. So you want to think of things that are conceptually, creatively challenging, um, but practically broad. So while the concept of a spell should be specific, 
the best spells are broadly applicable. Arms of earth might create arms of mud, but those can do so many things. Punch a baddie, snatch an ally away from danger, carry something heavy, for instance. A spell like Immolate Wood is not likely to contribute to the story unless all you're planning to do is set wooden things on fire. (laughs) Which could be a basis for a character if you want, but (laughs) going in... uh, Going in knowing that is important. And then the last thing, the spell uses alchemy, which might be obvious, but more generally, a spell that replicates something your character could do easily without alchemy is probably not the most interesting. So in present day, candlelight is probably a pretty trivial spell, considering the state of technology, and we all have cell phones that can make light. So you want it to do something interesting. And then there are two ways you can, two like suggested ways for building a spell. The construct method is simple, and if you're less experienced with role-playing, it might be the easiest one to start with. You start by picking a narrow subtype of that an element. Don't bother being granular. This isn't a chemistry test. Like, magma could be both fire or earth. Lightning could be the domain of air or fire, could be argued. And then there's some examples here that you can look through. And then after that, pick an interesting shape that you can uh, manifest the element as. And there's a list. Tentacles, hands, gauntlets, whips. Name your spell using the shape and element and add some flair. For example, blazing whips of magma, arctic shield, the wall of the seven cerulean winds. Mm. Uh, And then you have a spell. Uh, So you can conjure up constructs of that shape made of your elemental subtype and think about the different ways you can use it. For example, whips can attack, but grasp and defensively toss things. Shields can defend, obscure vision, bear loads, and... I think they can also be thrown pretty effectively. Um, I think Captain America showed us that. <laughs> I've Okay, true fact. My day job is actually working on a Marvel video game, and I have only ever seen one Marvel movie. So, <laughs> like, that's, that's where I'm at. Oh, I think you've seen one. You've seen them all. <laughs> I, I told them, it, they, them that during the interview process, and they were okay with it. So. Yeah. I hired you anyway. I have a question. If you can help me, like, workshop. Yeah. Oh, for this. sure. I want to do something with, like, I I like the name, like, Fires of Passion or something like that. I want the ability to, like, like, convince people or, like, get help or something. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I think that that's that's where my brain is. Uh, So that's actually, did did you read the next section? No. They used, they actually used the passion as an example. Oh, okay. Uh... I was like, oh, did you skip ahead? No. So, uh, yeah, that <laughs> is just completely... wanted to, like, be a politician and also fire. So. No, that's amazing. So there's the examples for a passion are that you can, like, rouse a crowd or distract a guard or soothe the emotions of a hysterical victim. Um, so, yeah, you, you could think about what form it takes. And you could be like, flames of passion could be in a, a spell that manipulates emotion through flames. Uh, that could be a great spell. I uh, I think I want it to look like like people's hearts are like you can like see them. Oh. Like almost like yeah. heated up, you know. That's perfect. Yeah. So good. Um so mechanically I'll just touch briefly what spells do is they either lower someone's resolve to be in the scene and like we said that can be done emotionally or physically. So uh you could physically burn their heart with the spell or you could make them like you know Uh, give up their will to fight against you uh, Mm -hmm. that way and the other thing they can do is inflict conditions Uh, so you could make someone like question their question their beliefs as a condition on them which then will make it easier for anyone else to Mm. lower their resolve and i think that spell could do both of those um i'm gonna write that but i would yeah i would keep it vague enough like a manipulate emotion so that you can use it in different contexts Mm -hmm. so so i named my spell Aquarius amplification. <gasps> and uh, I have mastered the ability to infuse an individual with water to grant magical abilities or greatly enhance existing abilities. So Perfect. Um, I, c- I could make myself or somebody else fly. I could make somebody super strong. I could make somebody's healing, natural healing enhanced to heal wounds, that sort of thing. Extremely good. Um, I have yeah. gone with... Uh, Blossom of Divine Beauty, and it is, I sort of mentioned before, she's going to have a very, like, feminine, um, like, 
wrote it's like specifically like flower focused uh uniform as much as i can get that yeah. and um so she's her she's specifically has mastery of roses so she can sort of picture roses appearing growing out of the ground forming shapes like entrapping people entangling people etc oh nice like isabella and encanto yeah you're absolutely right <laughs> Uh, my spell is Whispers of the Songbird, and it, uh, I'm going pretty basic, but it summons a wind-shaped bird, or a, not a wind-shaped bird, a bird-shaped wind, mm. is what I meant. <laughs> <laughs> trying to picture a wind-shaped bird for a second. <laughs> but it is a gust, uh, just a, a physical manifestation uh, of wind in kind of a solid wing or bird mm. shape. Perfect. Uh, so that is the spell. And I think with that, we have our word, worlds built and our characters built. Oh, wow. Oh, my gosh. And we, well, almost done. Yeah. Last thing is. I, I see some exciting stuff coming up. We have to build our team. Mm-hmm. Um, so we, it, this is less good in the uh, Excel spreadsheet. We kind of pasted the images in here. So one thing that's important, um, and if we were playing this season, you would have to describe your individual outfit in detail the first time you transform. But we have to kind of decide a costume, right? Your team has some unifying thematic elements on their magical outfits. How else would people know you're a team? Mm -hmm. Take time to talk about them. Maybe you all have elaborate epaulets, steampunk corsets, or AR goggles. Whatever it is, it helps reinforce who you are as a team. Uh, so do we have any a little, nice little mannequin there? We could we could draw it on um, in the in the physical world, but we can just take some notes. Do we want to lean was... into the the superhero direction? I like the superhero uh, aspect of it. Like like if we all had capes or yes, something. no capes. I'm just no, okay, no capes. All, all capes. capes. Okay. <laughs> Magical uh, girls very... never have to worry about Oops, capes. All capes. I'm pro hooded cape for me. I'm always a oh, hooded cape oh, sounds good. amazing. Oh, I really like that. Like so different it, colors for each of us. Oh yeah, it hits magical girl and superhero. Like hood down superhero, hood up kind of get a fantasy magical girl vibe. Absolutely. I feel like I picture the rest of my outfit though as like power suit. Oh um, yeah, thank oh. you. Like, now the question is, are we going pants or pencil skirt? Uh, <laughs> I'm definitely going to go. Like, I, I just have like a full on like ball gown. Just like, yeah, like a, almost like a like a bridesmaid dress or something. Mm. I like the idea that we all have like different versions of this like feminine standard, you know? So like, I feel like I would go with like, yes. you know, like pencil skirt button down, you know, like businesswoman. Yeah. But like still feminine. Yeah. With a hooded cape, yeah. With a hooded cape, yeah. Oh, I would have something flowy, something that like uh, that's got like a uh, I don't know, like a train or something Ooh. that like flows in in tune mm -hmm. with my cape yeah. as well. So it's like my 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 dress constantly looks like it's underwater. <gasps> yeah. I feel like yours has like an iridescent sheen to it. Yes, one hundred percent. Kind of like a yeah. Yeah, uh, the very, very mermaid aesthetic. Right. There's a moment at the end of The Princess Bride where she drops yeah, down. Yeah, so where she, like, jumps just, down to, like, get but, on the yeah. horse or whatever. And her yes. dress is just, like, sort of ethereally like floating all around her. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, shoot, I just had an idea for air, too. Where did it go? Oh, I feel like yours is, like, a really <laughs> cute, like, sundress. <gasps> it's really I feel, nice. Because I was, like, I was feeling what I like to tease D by calling librarian chic, mm -hmm. which is usually like a floral dress and then a cardigan. <laughs> yes. You know, like, yes. Yours yeah. is like cute summer picnic. Yeah. Beautiful. And then we have these. Oh my gosh, I love these so much. <laughs> <Seriously>. <laughs> it's true too. I like your observation that it's like, it's like four different, four very different like femininities coming at you. Yeah. It's like, they're all mm -hmm. like stereotypical. Yeah. You know, but. And people notice us first, first by the capes. Mm -hmm. But secondly, they're like, ah, I see your individual approaches. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, beautiful. Second, our magical mascot. 
So yes. this is someone in your world who knows more about the past world and is on your side. They might leave you mysterious messages in a video game or even just overtly show up and be a part of your life. They could be a magical fairy, a talking cat, or a sentient AI designed as a local shopkeeper. Whatever form they take, they definitely know some things you don't. Um, so Ugh. this... Um, this is my responsible the... animal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. you were like, there's a responsible animal. In the GM guide, there is a specific episode dedicated to meeting and learning about the magical mascot. So, What? Mm-hmm. Can I pause it? Um, oh, pause it. It's it's one of our pets, yeah. um, and um, let's see. What kind of pet do you have in the future, though? Because we talked about like our mascot not being an animal or something. You know, like what is? Oh, what is that? Yeah, because all the, all the animals we know now don't exist. But if it's a what if it's like a robot dog or a robot cat that like. An AI, a ghost. an AI still has a ghost it. in it. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. like the the original ghost, the OG. Yeah, it's a ghost of like someone who was on our former <gasps> superhero team. Yeah, Ooh. it was like our our it's our, 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 our white spirit. ranger was. Yeah. Yes. No. This is perfect. If I was jamming this game, I'd be like, "Why, yes," and then I would look mysterious and be like writing in the Mistress of Spirits character sheet right now. Yeah. like taking notes um <laughs> uh yes yeah, so i like that it was um and maybe we like maybe our pet has always known but we couldn't hear or communicate with it until our magic started reawakening in some way yeah oh this is good though my summary is robot pet with ghost in it what what pet would be like associated with like the spirit element like because i don't I know, think bird is right that's why we have the the spirit element be the outer scope because you're like oh that's a pluto they're they're just the weird element that no one would like have people have trouble making concrete spells about mm-hmm. i like i actually really like bird though I, that's yeah. a good image a little like robot yeah. robo parrot mm-hmm. like a, i was gonna say that of... or a bunny for some reason a little bunny it does feel cute. right but <laughs> There's a myth I really liked about nightingales, like a golden nightingale singing to a king. I can't remember it, though. But I really like the idea of a nightingale. I like that. What what about, um, because it's a robot, what if it transforms between a bunny and a bird? Oh, So, like, we could see the bird flying in, transforms into a bunny when it lands, or something like that. Yeah, no, I like that a lot. Oh, it's a Hans Hans Christian Andersen story. Sorry. About (laughs) About a robot nightingale oh, okay no. does no one know this no just alice then my cultural touch point doesn't really matter does it <laughs> I'm so, there'll um, be one of our listeners is like yes i know exactly oh, what that wow means. that sounds especially interesting stories of anything it's one of my it, favorites it is you should all I'm read sure it, it when you get a chance robot pet with ghost in it love it <laughs> okay yep. um I can change between I think i think a robot could change forms um what if it changes forms between like animals of the the past world um so like it oh yeah like it can, it can, it can the... do more than that but like yeah i like that it it prefers probably bunny and nightingale or something yeah. with us it just much can't be like, something big right like it's much not like we wear the lion. same outfits in every episode it it can be any animal it wants but it only changes in like special episodes you know? <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah so that we don't have to do so much animation work yeah i know it's so yep. expensive every time it feels sparks <laughs> And I love that our our uh, magical companion animal it it has its own transformation sequences. Yes. <gasps> oh yeah, I love that. <laughs> um, yeah, one of the things we ask in the first episode, the episode of mm-hmm. a campaign is, "Are you in the dub or the sub?" Uh, <laughs> that's what we ask, and we do make reference to things like, "And to cut animation budget, uh, we need a clip. We it. need a, a clip show here." So. Oh, absolutely. Uh, perfect. And then this is something we won't design, but we'll let you know it would happen in advancement, is there is a final spell. You confronted the evil in the past world. However it happened, it came at great cost to your team. Later in the season, you will need to describe your final spell that all alchemistresses have to work together to complete, what it looks like, and the cost you must pay to cast it. Mm. So that's the last thing on the team sheet, uh, is there is one great final spell. 
uh, that will come at a cost to you. Well, so. you know we're going to have to do that in the fanfic portion of our discussion. <laughs> yes, that's true. When we get there, I think that's the perfect time to discuss. Yeah, what that looks like. <laughs> All right. And that's uh, there are memories. We'll again talk about that. Like if we're going to talk about advancements, um, but they get written on this character sheet, um, and there are special memories that you get as individuals. Or the, the, there are memories you get as individuals, and then once an episode, there is a flashback trigger that your whole team has together. And so oh, those nice. memories that you have together would go on your team character sheet. Um, and once you have a memory, you can access it when you're not no longer transformed. So these are the things that you remember about your past world. Very cool. Yeah, we have two characters each and two worlds. Uh. uh all around applause. We did this it. Beautiful. Beautiful. We did it. And I honestly have to say that like it for how much we came up with and how much we designed, like this was pretty quick and pretty smooth. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I, I mean, having to come up with all of that stuff could potentially take a long time, but it feels like this was quick and easy and um, it flowed yeah. well. Too. Absolutely. Yeah, I think. That I mean, we have experts. So that helps. <laughs> well, I, so I, and I wonder too, like now I, I would really love to at some point, like do it the other way around and see like if it feels right. that same way. Um, mm -hmm. I liked it this way, especially talking about like the future and then how, how does 2020 affect <laughs> what we do <laughs> later on? Um, yeah, this was good. This was very good. Oh, good stuff. I love what we have. There's okay. a lot I love, but I think the weird retro mishmash diner millennial times i have to there. say i really was not <laughs> sure about that because i'm like i don't know if i really want to like play in the future or whatever but like i i love where we landed i really yeah, do absolutely <laughs> millennial times <laughs> millennial <laughs> times <laughs> it's just so good <laughs> oh. thank you both so much for doing this with us this was like oh it was so good and ryan so is good. like he's gonna be smiling for like a week <laughs> oh, now, after what we just seriously. did like I can see his eyes just like shining. You're um, also haunted, like... be haunted because I'll I'll not be able to play. I know, I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> oh, I just wanted to say that looking at your face warms uh, my heart, and I'm sure Doris too, as like designers. Yeah, it's really lovely to find the people who love the exact same things that you are trying to make and also oh, love. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Any if game, this were I an think... anime, he would have like the little twinkles in his eyes and everything. Yeah. Oh. Any yeah. <laughs> any character creation process, you know, it's not unique to this this game where you are setting up those like relationships. It always makes me be like, but are we good? Let's play it now. <laughs> right. Yep. Right. We have such a problem on this show to it being like, oh, man, why did we do this to ourselves? Bet, yeah. Like, who thought yep. this was a good idea? In this case, I also think our cost are so good, but it seems like a real I waste. Know. <laughs> oh, I know. No. I know. Uh, we won't get to describe that. Like, I'm going to have to go make a Pinterest board for this now. <sighs> um, do you want to just remind everybody where they can find you and where they can find this game in um, now, tomorrow, by the time this comes out? Mm -hmm. Um Tell us how to get it. Uh, all right. Yes. So you can find the game, the most important thing, uh, on Kickstarter, Alchemistresses, which you can check how to spell, but it's alchemy and mistresses together in one word. Um, and you can find me at Allison K. Cole on Twitter or at softchaos.games on, on the internet. And uh, you can find me on Twitter at Dora D underscore or uh, see some other games that I've made at dcity.h.io. Wonderful. Uh, well, uh, thank you again. This has been an absolute joy, and I can't wait to discuss this. Uh, thank you for everybody listening. Uh, please join us on the next episode for our discussion block, and absolutely check out uh, this Kickstarter uh, if you're listening uh, when this releases, because goodness gracious. It's uh, good. This, this sounds amazing. Yes. Call to watch action. Yeah, like that. Ryan? Ryan? Yeah. You can hear your smile in these episodes. <laughs> like, if it was ever possible to hear someone smile, uh -huh. it would be in this series. Like, yeah. I have that one picture that I keep <laughs> I keep sharing places because you <laughs> just, like... I, like yeah. You look like a kid on Christmas. It's uh -huh. amazing. 
Oh, uh, yeah, that it, that picture was right as we were diving into character creation. Uh, we were we were just about to start making people and I was so ready. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was great. This game was awesome. And I'm I'm so glad that we got a chance to cover it before the Kickstarter so that people mm-hmm. can hear about it. Because uh, it is so much better than the description that they give. Not like oh, no, yeah. no shade to Allison and Dora and the great job that they're doing. But like, there's no way that they could encompass this in the pitch. Yeah. Um, so I'm really glad we got a chance to look at it and share it with people because it's so good. It's so good. It's so good. Yeah. And, and like every everything about it, like this episode, we got into the world building of the past and the present and and uh, our millennial times shenanigans. <laughs> <laughs> I keep forgetting about that. <laughs> I loved it so much. And like, this is exactly the type of thing I would love to play with uh, with all that mysterious backstory to unravel, like as you play mm-hmm. and like seeing how that would play out in, in real time would be so fascinating. Absolutely. Um, check out the game on Kickstarter. If you've loved what you're hearing, if you are listening to this on the day it comes out, the Kickstarter launches tomorrow on June 14th. You can check the show notes for a link, but please don't miss this one. It's so good. It's so good. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, also, head on over to youtube.charactercreationcast.com and give our channel a subscribe to help us out in visibility uh, and to get updates on our episode releases as well as our episode promos. Um, I know Amelia created some phenomenal art for each of the later series that we have up on there so far. Uh, and we're working backwards in the catalog, did everything up there, but uh, that takes a lot of time. Uh, Amelia, you need to re-listen to all those episodes to get the themes. And We have so many episodes. We have so many. Ep- <laughs> yeah, like, so for a while, I could, I could do it without listening to them because they were recent enough or like, you yeah. know, I, I kind of knew what we were what we were going for, or I had character sheets that I could go off of or something like that. Yeah. Um, but now we're at the point where it's like, okay, these were a year ago. I don't, yep. I don't Things know. Things are starting to blend together. I'm like, like past the point now because I can hear it when I'm like, oh, I broke my hand and like I had my hand surgery. Like, so we're all past that, which means it's over a year ago now at this point. Yeah. Um. Okay. Whatever. <laughs> not going to happen. Right. But, but <laughs> I can't I mean, remember you're, breakfast. You're, <laughs> yep. <laughs> but you're getting some great uh, some great art out of it. Um, yeah, I'm having so. a lot of fun with it. It's really, it's stretching a creative muscle that I haven't gotten to use in a while. Yeah. Um, you know, and I keep saying, like, I'm not a graphic designer. I'm not, you know, so like these are for funsies. So anybody who's like looking at them and like being judgy, you know, I get it. Um, my color choices are maybe questionable, but <laughs> I am having fun. And I really honestly think that's all that matters. And absolutely on a YouTube page, it definitely looks better than like just a whole pile of our logo. It makes it a little more yeah. engaging and interesting. So I agree. Plus every single one so far has been uh, directly related to the episodes. Uh, so there's like some nice little Easter eggs in there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they've been um, I've been trying to make them about our show, not just about the game. Yeah. Like I'm trying to match, like trying to do both, you know, so that you can tell what game it is. But yeah, a little bit of each. Oh, they're so good. Well, I can't wait to see what else you come up with. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to have a complete, uh, what is that, a discography? I don't know what that's called for podcasts. Yeah, I don't know. I think discography Uh, is close enough, right? Yeah. So hopefully we'll have that sometime soon. Uh, but just keep an eye out for that. Subscribe and and uh, like and subscribe. Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, we're in that we're in that area now, right? I know. <laughs> uh, next up, check out our new Patreon. Uh, we are offering that at patreon.com slash character creation cast. We have quite a bit in there already. Uh, for all of the levels of support, you can get bonus outtakes at the $1 level. At $5 level, you can get bonus episodes and early release episodes. The mm-hmm. next episode in this series is already in there. So, like, if you can't wait, <laughs> yeah. I got great news for you. <laughs> um, there's all kinds of stuff going on there. Um, those episodes in there don't have the cold open yet because we don't have haven't done them yet. Yeah, um, <laughs> they, they just get in there as soon as I'm done editing. So yeah. I, I edit them, I throw on the music, I throw on the credits, and, and it goes right to the Off Patreon. We go. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's literally as soon as Ryan's done, they'll be up. So, Hot so off the go presses. check that out. 
Uh, we also have a bunch of other rewards, including personal thank you cards, special Discord channels, as well as shout outs on the podcast. Uh, so we would like to thank our patrons personally before we head into the review. Um, you are all helping make this show possible, and we are incredibly thankful for your continued support. Uh, Lieutenant, our first patron, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, previous guest of the show, David Tigranosaurus, uh, thank you so much. And Eric Bontz, thank you for your support. Mm -hmm. And a thank you to any future patrons that we don't know about as of the recording of this call to action. Uh, again, if you want to join this list and help us out, head on over to patreon.com slash character creation cast and check us out. If you are unable to support us financially, but still want to help us out, we totally get it. Uh, you can leave reviews on Apple Podcasts, Podchaser, Facebook, or Podcast Addict. Uh, those are the places that we can easily see. So if you find somewhere else that you can leave a review, let us know. We will go find it. We will read it. Mm -hmm. uh, for now, this is the last one we have in our pocket, but it comes from Coyote on Podcast Addict. A very cool way to discover RPGs with the hosts and their guests creating characters for various games. The games used are varied, and you'll probably find ones that interest you. The tone is quite humorous and makes listening very pleasant. Thank you so much for Thank that, Thank you so Coyote. much. We, we hope that it's enjoyable for people, I think. That's one of my favorite yeah. things about making this show. Is like, we're having fun, and I hope that that comes through. Yeah, and, and I like that we come across as pleasant. Yeah, yeah. I always <laughs> say that I like that you think that about me. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's all we have for this week's episode. Uh, join us next week for the finale to this glorious series where we discuss the process and dive into some absolutely phenomenal oh, fanfic. Yes. So good. Until then, take care, everyone. Stay safe. Drink some water. Take some breaths. Relax your shoulders. It'll be okay. And keep making those amazing people. We'll see you next time. Creation Cast is a production of the One Shot Podcast Network and can be found online at www.charactercreationcast.com. Head to the website to get more information on our hosts, this show, and even our press kit. Character Creation Cast can also be found on Twitter at CreationCast or on our Discord server at discord.charactercreationcast.com. I'm one of your hosts, Ryan Bolter. And I can be found on Twitter at Lord Neptune or online at LordNeptune.com. Our other host, Amelia Antrim, can be found on Twitter at Ginger Reckoning. Music for this episode is used with a Creative Commons license or with permissions from the podcast they originated from. Further information can be found within the show notes. Our main theme music is Hero, remixed by Steve Combs, and is used with a Creative Commons license. This podcast is owned by us under Creative Commons. This episode was edited by Ryan Bolter. Further information for the game systems used in today's guest can also be found in the show notes. If you'd like to support our show, find us on Patreon. Get access to bonus episodes, extra outtakes, and much more at patreon.com slash character creation cast. Thanks for joining us. And remember, we find the best part of any role-playing game is character creation. So go out there and create some amazing people. We'll see you next time. Now we gotta read some show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Character Creation Cast is hosted by the One Shot Podcast Network. If you enjoyed our show, visit OneShotPodcast.com, where you'll find other great shows like Campaign. Campaign Skyjacks takes place in an original setting inspired by folktales and classic adventure fiction. James D'Amato leads Liz Anderson, John Patrick Cohen, Tyler Davis, Johnny O'Mara, 
and in recent episodes, Nathan Blades, as they tell a tale of daring sky pirates, giant birds, and the terror of a cursed sea. It's funny, dramatic, and at times emotionally devastating. Search for Campaign Skyjacks or James D'Amato on iTunes, Google Play, or your favorite podcast app.